morning everybody the topic of the day is marketing research or market research used both ways now i have sent a small summary of the lectures in the morning i hope uh, you might have gone through so i'll just start from there i'll try from now on i'll try to start my lecture with some story so that uh, you can connect with the topic even better so uh, i will explain the story that is there in the uh, summary of the lectures maybe some of you have not got time to go through with the story we will get to know what is market research how is it done uh, why there are classification etc etc so it's like this the same story like you have a, a business of a bakery shop meaning you manufacture pastries and uh, you have a distribution network maybe in a metro city and you have been supplying to the entire metro cities and your business is doing well now you, you find that there is a competition meaning uh, some other also copied the same business model and then their quality also is equally good and you find that your market share is slightly getting depleted because the competitor is acquiring customers from your segment so you are worried about uh, future of your business now you want to diversify while uh, diversifying you want to understand as to what to manufacture should you go for uh, absolutely new product like maybe bread or maybe say patties or something uh, or whichever product that uh, may uh, that may may be of interest to you now first consideration should be that you should be able to uh, have a synergy with the new product synergy meaning and the dictionary meaning of synergy will be something like one plus one is equal to more than two meaning that you have some facility to manufacture something now with little bit of addition you actually add value to both new system as well as uh, the existing system like suppose uh, suppose one of your friend is a singer and suppose you are a musician maybe you play some some instrument now as a single vocalist your friend is not of so much value he he or she needs an orchestra or something whereas as an instrumentalist you may not be much you need some to accompany somebody so you two together join hands and create a full orchestra full music band and that becomes the sum total of the value or the value of the new team is much more than the sum of the individual value so when the value of the com combination is more than the sum of the value of the individual constituents is more than it is called synergy so you want to have synergy meaning you don't want to put up new infrastructure new distribution network everything new that becomes a new business you don't want to do that so you want to diversify in an area where you can utilize your existing infrastructure you think that you have people are becoming more more health conscious so maybe uh, people do not many people do not buy pastries because pastries has a lot of sugar content and white sugar is now gradually gaining a bad name called white poison because white sugar is not good for health and there are many medical paper journal papers where people have demonstrated that consumption of white sugar is more damaging than whatever good is it doing so you think that because this health consciousness has been growing uh, there will be some people in the entire market segment who will be interested to have the pastry but get rid of the side effect of sugar or maybe there are you know uh, diabetic patient diabetic people they are not patient in a true sense of the term but they are diabetic their sugar level is higher slightly higher maybe but they don't want to sacrifice the taste of pastry and taste of other sweets so you want to launch a variety of pastries with sugar free so that you know a separate you can define a sub segment within the segment who are more interested in the new product rather than uh, rather than uh, you know depriving themselves of this tasty food but then you are not sure whether there there will be customers who will be interested to buy sugar free pastry 
one major reason, major reason is that you know sugar free also is not liked by many people both perhaps because of its taste and there are other medical reports i'm not going into that i don't want to create some bias in your mind so you want to really examine whether there will be people because you know even though you're going to use your old infrastructure existing infrastructure to manufacture and sell there will be a lot of added investment requirement even the packaging itself how you design the package what package then uh, the shape then uh, uh, so many things even launching a new product requires a lot of money a lot of advertisement a lot of awareness creation etc it, it will not sell just like that so you have estimated that your new investment requirement will be something like say 10 million rupees meaning 1 crore rupees so and you do not have 1 crore rupees you have something like 25 lakh 2.5 million rupees or so so you have to borrow money from bank and you have seen that if I borrow something like 7.5 million rupees, my interest itself will be more than a million rupees a year. So why to unnecessarily take that risk in case, in case it fails, you're going to incur a lot of loss. So you want to make sure that people will buy. So you want to gather customer information about their liking, disliking, their preference. Huh? on this particular product sugar free what is their opinion about sugar free pastry and whether they will like the test whether they will prefer it over sugar sugared uh, white means pastry with white sugar even some people without diabetes without any problem with the sugar may just prefer sugar free because of safety that it gives there are some misconception that if you consume sugar you get diabetes so you want to know customers choices and preferences and you want to know that by doing some research meaning gathering data from the market and uh, get a first hand information so that it helps you in making a decision whether or not to launch a new product called sugar free pastry the process of doing this meaning gathering data and then analyzing that for decision making is known as marketing research or market research. You're doing research in the marketplace by gathering information from the customers, consumers about their liking and disliking on a product that you are either selling or you are going to sell or you are about to launch or you are planning to launch, whatever that is. So this gathering of information, analyzing so that it becomes, it helps you to make decision is marketing research. Now let us see what are the types of research and how you go about it, how these are different, etc. Before going to the definitional part of it, let us see that firsthand so that it makes sense when we talk about the definition. So at the beginning, when you realize that you need 10 million rupees, and you have many options about a market research, various options. Number one option is option is going door to door to everybody, all the con consumers in the country and get to know their preferences. There are two, two important problems in that. Reaching out to all the people in the country is a humongous task. Is going to require more than 10 million rupees, number one. Number two, just asking them question may not translate into information that will actually give you the real picture. Why? Because I may say that, yes, yes, I will like sugar-free pastry, so go ahead and manufacture and then supply. Then when I will be eating that, I may not like the test. Then the data will go haywire. The decision will go haywire. So you need to really give a sample to me and then see whether I like the test or not. So that's a humongous task. Giving a sample to everybody is a, is a costly affair. You don't want to do that. You don't want to invest so much money. So market research is done with, with the sampling system at the beginning, meaning sampling, uh, say, exercise at the beginning, meaning you want to identify a small group of people within the segment meaning everybody does not consume pastry i don't eat pastry for example because for, for a long time 
my sugar level is at the boundary level. Long time meaning very long time, more than 35 years, I am at the boundary. But then, because of my control on my food, food consumption and regular exercise, bit of meditation and some rituals early in the morning, etc., etc., walking, I could restrict it at, at a very at a very fixed level. It is at the higher side, but within the band, but it is not shooting up. Now, I don't consume pastry because I, I consider that that should not be in my menu of the food. But then if there is a, an occasion and somebody is offering even cake or anything, I just consume without much botheration. But I'm not afraid of food. I just keep myself restricted. Now, so you define a seg sub-segment within the segment. What is the segment? Segment is those people who consume pastries. So you, you try to reach out to them, you advertise that our pastry is good, good or whatever is good about your pastry, you try to reach out to them with your brand and people gradually attach value to your brand when they consume, they like it, etc. Now, you cannot reach out to the entire segment. So you identify that, okay, we will be reaching out to people. Suppose you are operating from Mumbai or say Chennai. So you want to reach out to local people within the segment. Maybe say uh, there are some uh, some people uh, unmuted. Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. Uh, sir, uh, have you shared anything? Or... Is one. Okay. So sir, you, uh, share your screen, sir? you reach out see. to a smaller group of people, maybe who are physically reachable. You define that and then sir, what yes, sir, 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 did you hear it? Can you listen to If you go to them directly, that is going to require some money, maybe say one lakh rupees, two lakh rupees, or five lakh. Sir, and you yes. are afraid that if sir, the can you listen to us? that that uh, emerges out of the system is negative, then this money goes down the drain. Sir, sir, you have not yeah. shared this screen, sir. We can do anything. Just a second. I think some student is calling. Maybe some problem. Hello. No, I'm not sharing the screen as yet. I have kept it uh, hidden for the time being. I'll, I'll be putting that. I'm just telling a story. Yep. Welcome. But I'm, I should be audible. That is for sure. I, I hope that I'm audible. Right? Am I audible? Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, great. So, uh, at the beginning, you don't want to go to even a, a small number of people because that is going to cost you money. What is not going to cost you money, but will give some insight, reveal some behavior of your customer in general, customers in general, is available information. Many people collect information for, for something, for maybe some research, say some IIT scholar who is doing a research on food. Maybe they have done some research and the information is there in the public domain, maybe in a, in a journal paper or maybe in the thesis, but it is a, one can lay their hands on this data. So you try to do that research first, meaning whatever information is available in the public domain, you try to capture that information and then make some decision whether to go or not to go. Go, no go decision. Now you see that in the research papers or somewhere, maybe somebody is in some economic times, they have sometime did something and then mentioned that 25% uh, of the people are actually looking for something sugar free, but market is not available, uh, means there is no product available, etc. So similar information, uh, is definitely available somewhere. And when you collect information from secondary source, meaning you are not collecting the information by yourself, you are collecting from somebody who has already gathered that information for their own consumption, not for your consumption, their own consumption. This information is known as secondary source of information, this source, secondary source, meaning information source which is already existing and there is information for you to take, 
without spending much of money maybe sometimes you have to spend some money maybe you find that there is a research, research article he has published and he said that uh, 25% people are actually interested in in sugar free or something not directly sugar free but indirectly indicating so you want to talk to this guy and get his data that what other data you have collected because all data will not be there in single paper so you talk to him over phone or send a mail this guy now tells you that i can give you that data if you pay me 25000 rupees i am a scholar i am still doing the research i spend money to gather this data so if this data is useful to you pay me something so that my cost is different and we both are happy so you pay him 25000 rupees but you get this data this is called secondary market research this whole thing gathering data from secondary source analyzing that making decision based on that is secondary market research now you get the data from that research scholar and you see that there is every reason to believe that people will like sugar free pastry but then how can you trust on somebody who has not gathered the data for you he just taking some money and giving maybe there was some fallacies maybe he has collected only five piece of data multiplied that by 100 so he is telling that i talk to 5 5000 people or 500 people whatever that is there is no there is lack of you know authenticity so you want to make it more authentic number one number two you want to do it yourself the in your own way meaning you want to get more confidence about the whole system so you want to talk to some people at least to verify that then what you do is means you are it is you are still not interested to spend lot of money to do the whole market research so you tell something like five people of your company that why don't you go why don't you stand at the counter maybe wherever these pastries are being sold and interview some people so five people go in five shops whosoever is coming and buying pastry they are asking you know this pastry has white sugar suppose some company or the same company provides you uh, sugar free pastry will you buy and many people say yes we would love to buy some people will say no i don't i'm not interested in sugar free or anything so you gather the data without spending lot of money but then the sample size is very small maybe say 200 people or so so when you do that you are actually exploring the exploring slightly deeper not not very much in depth but you are just exploring from the surface of the you are just scratching the surface of the market so this is called exploratory market research but you are collecting the data yourselves so this is primary research primary but exploratory there is another issue suppose you ask these those guys who say who tell you that yes we are interested to buy now you ask them how much interested then you going to ask you how much in how do i tell you very much interested or somewhat interested how can i tell you then you can give him a scale maybe from 0 to 10 where do you place yourself where do you place your interest in buying that and where do you place your interest in buying sugar white sugar based pastry now they give some data and you get some kind of you know not really qua- quantitative data but somewhat qualitative data meaning they are somewhat interested some are very much interested some are less interested some are disinterested so you can categorize that either based on this terminology disinterested somewhat very much highly absolutely or something so this is not really qual- quantitative data this is qualitative data they are expressing their willingness in some qualitative terms so there are two kinds of data one is qualitative another is quantitative so you do market research both means the data that you collect are of two types qualitative and quantitative now i said initially you want to get some some knowledge about the market after you do the do the secondary research in the primary research you do some exploratory research meaning you just want to explore slightly deeper whether there is really authentic information whether this data is this secondary data is authentic so you do that exploratory research so primary research can be exploratory if you want to define the market 
describe the market completely, meaning how many people will be interested absolutely to buy this product when available. So this is called descriptive market research, meaning you want to describe the entire customer, profile the entire customer as per their actual liking, disliking. So when you do that, you do a descriptive market research, meaning you describe the market completely. So people say that, yes, we will buy very much. We are very much interested. We are crying for this kind of a pastry I'm not getting. And I have a compelling, you have a compelling reason to produce. Gone, done. But still, you can get more confidence doing some more research. What is that? You can do some causal research. What is that? You can manufacture some sample pastry, sugar-free pastry, pastries. And then you can invite people to your shop or whosoever comes to your shop, you can offer them a a bundle of pastries, two pastries. One is sugar-free, another is white sugar pastry. And then you can ask them that you eat both and tell us which one is better. And then they eat and say that both are same. I don't, I can't make difference. This is called causal research, meaning you give them some, some kind of a stimulation, some kind of a experience, and then they give a feedback. This is called causal research. Causal research is done even deeper. You can do a blind test. How can you do that? Say, when people come to your shop or you go to a marketplace, then offer everybody two pieces of pastry without telling them which one is what. Now, you know that there is a code, one or two or whatever. You give some code. Now, you tell them that this pastry has a code which is called one and this pastry has a code of two. Now, you eat them and tell us which one is better. After eating, they may say that I don't find any difference. Some people may say that two is better than one. Many people will say one is better than two, etc. You analyze the data based on their perception and then you will, you will get a lot of revelation, a lot of insight about the real nature of the customers, whether they are going to like or dislike when you really launch the product. This is called causal research. You give a cause, say this blind test, or there may be causal research like suppose whether, or maybe you can give a free sample. Suppose you are selling pastry, within the, within the package, you just put a small bite of pastry without telling them that this is, with or without telling them that this is uh, sugar free. And then you take their feedback. They say that, yeah, we like it, we like it better. So this is also causal research, whenever you do that, or whenever you want to reduce the price, you can do a causal research. You reduce the price and see how people, uh, how much people buy more or less or whatever. Then you decide to increase the price or decrease the price accordingly. Likewise, there may be many more causal research. So marketing research, if you are doing, if you are, if you are defining in terms of type of data, it is quality, qualitative and quantitative. If you define that based on source of data, it is secondary and then primary. Secondary means you gather existing information. Primary means you gather information directly from the source for your own consumption. Third is, third means, third type of classification of market research. There are three classifications. One is exploratory. You merely explore whether there is a market for this product. Second is descriptive. You try to describe the market, profile the market completely. Third is causal research. This gives you direct experience. You, you show, you give some sample and people tell you that, yes, I liked it and this is good. I'll buy so this is causal research. There may be many other, but it's good for us. For this class, I think that should be good enough. So tell me whether this is, about, this is visible. This slide is visible or not. Are the slides visible? No, sir. No? Yes, yes, visible. It's, uh, yes, sir, some... it is. Okay, so that's great. No, sir. Still, still it is not visible. It's still not visible? Okay, then I'll, uh, I will 
pull it down and then put it again. Oh, lecture one, presentation two, where is the slides? It's here. Now is it visible? I think now it should be visible. Sir, yes, sir, now it is visible. Okay, thank you. So I'll be moving fast fast because the entire slide deck has already been discussed. It is just customary that I have to see whether I have left anything and complete that. This is called marketing funnel. Marketing funnel or sales funnel. See, the whole country, population of the whole country can be your customer. But if you try to target them, then unnecessarily you will spend a lot of money to reach out to everybody only to realize that only 5% are my customers. So it is important that you define your customer base that is called segmentation. The, the people who have similar kind of test, similar kind of aspiration that your product fulfills, those people constitute your segment. Now, first what you do is you reach out to this segment and then ask them or uh, tell them that you know i have a product like this and this will this will solve your pain or whatever then they show interest so a group of people show interest out of them some people register in your portal for buying the product so they can they, they they express consideration that yes i would like to buy then they see uh, means they express their intent through whatever means meaning uh, they try to uh, they don't buy immediately but they try some they collect some information they try to evaluate and all that they see how many people have uh, give, given feedback how, how many of them are four star five star two star one star so they do evaluation and eventually they purchase when they are satisfied and then after purchase they talk about it to their friends so it becomes word of mouth and then in the office in the tea party or in coffee shop they they keep talking about your product, then more people come to know, then more people come back and then they also travel the same path or maybe there will be a shortcut at maybe intent or maybe evaluation or some people will directly purchase because you are trusted to them, etc. So that is what is called marketing funnel. Remember, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle famously said, and this is a very important quotation, you should remember and use it wherever possible. It's a capital mistake to theorize before one has it up. If you talk from gut feel or from your, uh, you know, sense of gut sense or something, then uh, that, that's, that's a mistake actually. You should not speak like that. You should always depend on data. Use the data only. If somebody says that, you know, people are not going to vote for this party, then you say, what is the source of data? Which data, based on which data are you saying? If they say, no, this is my guess, then you say, this is bullshit. Guess doesn't work. And uh, there are a lot of definitions. You should read them. I, I, I just cannot, cannot afford to read the definitions. I have already explained what is market research in a very big way. So definition from Wikipedia, just, just a copy paste. Marketing research helps to identify unmet demand. When you are a startup, you do not have any idea whether people uh, are satisfied or unsatisfied with the existing products. Is there unmet demand left? So if you can identify that unmet demand, that will help you to make a decision whether to go ahead with, with building the product or not to go ahead with building the product. Then understand market's need, preferences, aspiration. As I said, that is what you do for, uh, that is what is marketing research. Evaluate customer satisfaction. Like suppose you have a product. Now customers, there is a growth of 10%. You want to understand why the growth is 10%, why not 20% or why not 5%? What am I doing good? That is why it is 5%. What am I doing bad? That is why it is not 20%. So you try to gather information from customer, your own customer maybe, that uh, which of the features you are excited about and what is your level of excitement? People say that our level of excitement, say 90% say it's about 6 out of 10. It is not less than five. So that is why we are coming repeatedly. Now you say, why it is six? Why not 10? Then you ask another question that what do you think would give you a 10, would, would, uh, would give a 10, you will give a 10 rather than six. They will say that, you know, your the test is good, but it's not exciting. 
Likewise, they may say something different. Maybe packaging is okay. Maybe purchasing is slightly difficult or something. You can identify that in the process and then you come up with that. You get a growth of 20-25% every year. So that will translate into humongous amount of profit. You know, if you are selling 100 items, maybe that is break even. Just, you know, you are barely, you are barely getting the cost, recovering the cost. Now, for selling every additional piece you are making profit so when the growth becomes 25 percent your profit will go up lips and bounds so you need to understand you need to get that data you need to do that market research that is why you do market research you can improve product through questioning through getting information but then marketing research is very systematic it's not some casual way of you know going and standing in the marketplace and asking throwing bullshit question before somebody people are highly highly resistant to uh, you know, interaction with people. You just call somebody, excuse me, I want to get your perspective on this. They'll say, bullshit, just go away. Don't disturb me. Meaning they may not tell in the face of it, but then they will feel that what nonsense. I am think I am standing here for some purpose. Don't disturb. They will put a board, don't disturb. At least you go, go to home, go, go door to door, they'll say, don't disturb. Marketing research gives decision makers the information they need to find solutions to business problems such as the following. How satisfied the customer? How will the customer react to a decision like sugar free? What are service representatives hearing from customers? Meaning uh, are, are people saying that your product is exciting, extremely good or they are saying your product is good. You know good and extremely good is a very very dif different thing. So your objective is to get at least some customers some some customers who should say that you are your product is the best you know in my feedback from students believe it or not about uh, 70 percent i'm not sure about the percentage will gives me the maximum the maximum possible grade maybe five out of five but there are some students maybe something like five to ten in different semester they give me the lowest grade I don't know why, because they don't write. They don't write that, you know, your uh, this is not good, that is not good. And I request, always request students to give, to write. I don't request that you give me the best grade. I never request. But I want to know what do I do right and what do I do wrong. The feedback, actually a market research for faculty member, believe it or not. And I do analyze. I just wait for the day when this will be released for us. And then I actually wait so anxiously as you wait to know the great. So do this favor to me, write whatever goes wrong so that next time I can correct it and then I don't get the lowest grade from anybody, okay? And whosoever is giving me five, they should feel that I want to give you more than five. So I want to do that. So this venture capitalist interview was for that only. Meaning whatever I do, I want to do the best. Otherwise, I don't want to do. When I said that I may discontinue teaching, I, I mean it. Because when I see that some people are giving me the least possible marks, it really gives pain. And I feel that I'm not doing the justice. Probably there is somebody else who will do it better. So I should stop doing that so that I create an opportunity for the right guy who will do it rightly. So the role of marketing research, the task of marketing research is to provide management with relevant, accurate. This is more important. You know, you can get secondary source of data, but that may not be accurate. That will not give you the confidence that, yes, this is right. So that is why you want to do primary market research, meaning you want to gather information by yourselves. And you want to do it by your own people, maybe. Of course, primary research can be done by market research consultant. There are many companies in India. I think there are more than 100 companies in India who help companies to do the market research. They do market research on behalf of this company. Please, please hold on for a second. I have some... Sir, you are muted.
Sorry about it. It's a courier. Very sorry. I don't know if now this becomes invisible. So is it visible, my presentation slide? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So the role of marketing research, you should be able to uh, appreciate now that it really means lot to a decision maker and it should be accurate, it should be reliable, it should be valid, valid, and then current information it should not be old information like in 2020 how many cars were selling of this kind is not going to help us to uh, to make a decision competitive marketing environment oh my god is this going to be the time no what is the time okay 40 then importance of market research i think you can already appreciate a, an example of market research uh, this is a wonderful example not from india but then it makes a lot of sense so i put it in 1985 harper collins found sales of agatha christie novel declining sales were declining they commissioned a quantitative and qualitative research they thought why the the novel should not sell because the, it is the same uh, you know crime story that should sell but people were not buying so they thought why people are not buying you know most of the novels that people buy on a on the occasion of a birthday celebration or somebody's uh, anniversary etc etc but then they so they found that people are not buying these and not gifting it to others then after the commissioning of the market research people revealed that it is the cover the cover looks so gruesome that they don't want to gift it to gift it to a ch child for on his birthday because it looks so, so, you know, not so nice, not so pleasant. So whenever you will gift it and when he will, he or she will uncover the gift, you'll be surprised to look at the cover itself. So they changed the cover and sale went up 40% in the next year. So that clearly shows what actually is the value of market research. Now, these are the activities for which market research is done. I think it covers everything that a business does, creating awareness at the beginning, meaning, first of all, when you want to create an awareness, you want to come up with an advertisement. Now, if you think that you know how to advertise, that is a wrong idea. You have to know what is the profile of the people that you are talking to. If, you are, if your customers are children, that will be one thing. If your customers are poor people, advertisement will be very different. If your customers are rich people, it will be different. So depending on target audience, not only target audience, that test also. Some people, like suppose you are targeting uh, very literate people. So you cannot give some you know, bright color uh, bro brochure or something. It should be a very uh, brochure of a gravity color, etc., etc. So likewise, it depends on liking of the mark of the people. So you do some, you know, uh, secondary market research for uh, identifying as to what should be not means who are the uh, means to talk to some artist or maybe a, a consultant who does uh, branding and all that, etc. Likewise, so all these actually are done through market research. These are the objective. Whatever you do are the objective. One is SWOT analysis. I'll just talk about SWOT analysis very quickly because I may not get another chance to. So I just inserted this here. Some of not so much relevant for the topic, but it's relevant for the subject. SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threat. I see that many students give presentation and they know about it left and right, perhaps even better than me at times. So a strength means, see, in your company, in your company, there are things that competitors cannot compete with, meaning you do something better than competitors, and that is your strength. And if you can, you know, accentuate that strength, you can win customers again and again and in, in an increasing manner because your competitors will have a ca catch up game to really catch up with you uh, before they can supersede. So you will continuously try to improve that and the, and the competitors will remain at a catch-up game. 
your weakness, where what your competitors are doing much better. That is your weakness, where your product is slightly not meeting the customer's need. There is some features, if you want to add that feature is going to cost so much that your product price will be exorbitantly high. That is your weakness. You have to now find out how you can eliminate that weakness. Then there is opportunities, meaning where all you can actually excel you can exploit some of your uh, some of the access to a strategic asset maybe maybe suppose you are manufacturing say uh, whatever say steel you are manufacturing steel i give this example because there are good synergy you manufacturing steel and uh, you are buying iron ore from other companies now you have to that is an opposite suppose th there is a chance that you get a get a license in some iron ore mine if you if you get that that will give access to this and that is an opportunity that you open up a new opportunities likewise there may be many other opportunities threat is something like like there are something in your company or with your company and that can be broken by your competitors or customers may go away because of that or that that may give you some inherent inherent uh, uh, Weakness, weakness, meaning it, it may create weakness at some point of time. This is a threat, threat where your company or weakens competitive advantage. You have some advantage, but then it is susceptible to external threat. The, the slides where there is a cross, you may actually omit that. You don't have to go through. I kept it for, for something. Sorry again, I'm not going, but then uh, yeah, this slide is important. Marketing research starts at the very outset, meaning when you think of coming up with an idea, just an idea comes to your mind, then you start doing some secondary research. Like uh, you try to uh, gather some information, whether there, this idea is good, bad or ugly or whatever. So you try, you try your best, then uh, eventually, you try to de develop the product based on the secondary market research, etc. Marketing research start the house, meaning for a startup is very important because you want to, you don't want to spend a lot of money and resources and time building something that customers will not buy. So you want to, just to get that, uh, that, that confidence, you, you actually do a little bit of a market research, but then you cannot, when it, you are at an idea stage, you really cannot afford to spend so much money to do a primary research. Primary research costs money because you have to gather information by yourself. Whereas secondary market data is available in the internet itself, on the internet itself. So you just collect that data, spending some time. So at different stages of the company, the type of research is very different. When you can afford and when you need authenticity, accurate data, reliable data, then you do primary research, but then you must have the budget. So all those determine what method you are going to apply. Then why market research for a startup? Ideally, it starts at the time of identifying the pain point. As I mentioned, attractiveness of the market depends on size of the market, historical growth, present growth, future growth. I talked about it when I talked about the market structure and continued so you want to go through validated learning how you will do that you will make a prototype then take it to the marketplace or maybe to some customers this is called causal research so validated learning is a part of causal research remember this it's not written anywhere but it's a part of causal research now what research to do that depends on the spend of the market if you do not have money if you don't want to spend a lot of money Obviously, you don't want to do primary research. Then type of market research. There are three types I mentioned. Potential problem of doing it. This is the slide where the types are mentioned quite exhaustively. And I told you so. Like sources of data is primary, secondary. Method is qualitative, quantitative. Quantitative means you get quantity. In, in get, you get data in terms of numerical values. Qualitative, you get data. Something like good, bad, ugly. Or something like... Uh, very much interested, not interested, or somewhat interested by objective. 
one is exploratory when you get some preliminary idea that yes there is a demand explore you do exploration then descriptive you want to define the entire market causal you want to give some input in the market some stimulation and then people react in a manner and you analyze the reaction and then you get idea quantitative qualitative research i've already explained and why you do that also i have explained qualitative is obviously when gathering quantitative data is difficult quantitative data is always better quantitative data is always better but then it is not always feasible to get a qual quant quant quantitative data it's not always feasible like suppose you want to ask all uh, children whether they are interested in online teaching suppose some school wants to get this data so ultimately children may say that okay i am somewhat interested i am not so much interested etc so that will be qualitative but then uh, if you want to say how many students gave a five star or said said i am very much interested that becomes quantitative data so these are all uh, dif means different context different data types now information source primary secondary i don't think you need any more explanation if you are doing primary then there are many ways to do that on a survey you design a questionnaire send it to individuals they respond back by filling the questionnaire that is called survey you can send it by mail you can send it uh, by internet meaning in, uh, email or maybe you can stand uh, somewhere in the marketplace distribute this questionnaire and ask them to fill it and then immediately deposit you might have already encountered that in in a mall people are standing with some piece of paper they ask you to fill the information and then uh, they give you some free gift or something for doing that or they may have some lottery system that you will get some bonuses etc focus group when you invite some people in a small room big room or whatever then you talk to them about the novelty of your solution then you take back take feedback from them they tell you that yes this is good this is not good we don't want this we want that etc so that gives a direct one on one kind of a response not one on one but almost direct but you can invite one or two people or three people or four people and then rather than in a room you sit or across the table maybe over a cup of coffee or something then you you talk to them that you know look you i know that you are con consuming this or maybe your people are consuming or maybe you are an expert in this domain now tell me if i do this what is your reaction or tell me whether i should do or not do or whatever you would like to understand that is called interview you explore deeper because you can you know they not only give you feedback but based on feedback you can ask another question they say that i don't think that people will be interested then you give them you know my experience with this is like this i talk to another group of people they say that uh, there there are these these reasons why people will buy this then they revise their opinion then they say that coming to think of it i think i would like to change my opinion maybe there will be there will be 25 percent of the people who will strongly view that this is good but maybe some less number of people etc so interview is much better much much deeper but then there is a limitation as to how many people you can interview we cannot interview one one million people but you can send questionnaire to one million people so survey can be very wide but then interview cannot be so wide even focus group will be slightly less wide because because less wide compared to survey because you can bring only so many people in a room experimental and field trial that is what is causal research causal research uh, i am coming to causal research then observation observation is you stand in the mall and look at people's behavior when they are picking up something from the from the shelf and then looking at the label then putting it back or they are putting it in the basket so whenever they are putting it in the basket or putting it back you try to understand what he looked at and that helped him to make a decision to either put it this side or that side you can even ask them that you know i noticed that you evaluated this visually but then you did not put it in the basket what is the reason then they will say that yeah you know the content in the content i found that there is something like this which i don't like or i don't uh, i have allergy to this or something they will say so you get that insight now field causal research is done one of the method of causal research is called ab test ab test is something like this suppose you are designing a website for your own 
say e-commerce company. Now every website has a theme. Like whenever I do something, I give uh, my my slides, my text, my color are uh, dominated by blue color uh, for for whatever reason. I I think that this is this is uh, across the board acceptable. I don't go by my liking. I go by majority liking. If I give some say yellow color or red color and all that, I know that there will be a group of people who will like it, but then there will be majority who will not like it. Something like that, there should be something. But when you are making a website, you cannot afford to do that, it means you cannot be just, you know, one way decision making. So what you do is, rather than building one website, you build two websites. Then you see how many people visit both the website, not both, meaning every website, how many people visit. Suppose 1000 people visited, say, red color dominated website and maybe say uh, 1000 people and maybe 900 people visited, say, green uh, dominated, uh, green color dominated website. Now you see out of this 1000 people who visited red dominated website, how many of them bought? Suppose 500 people bought and People who visited green dominated website, how many people bought out of 900, maybe 502 people bought. Now you have a percentage of people converting into customer. So red dominated people converted by 50%, green dominated people converted to the extent of say 55%. So now you think that more people when they visit my website, if the color is green or maybe blue or maybe some other color, they are getting converted into customers. So I should have, if I am having only one portal, then that color should be green or blue, depending on whatever data is. That is what is A-B test. A is one website, B is another website. That is why it is called A-B test. I will give another example. When I do market uh, marketing management, I will talk about Barack Obama's story. That's a wonderful story. So survey has some method, focus group has some method. I have already discussed that. I think I have discussed more than, oh, this Barack Obama experiment is very much here. When Barack Obama, Obama was trying to stand uh, as a candidate for American presidency, he hired consultant that I need money, so I need donation, so I need to have a website, give a, give a design that will attract more people to donate. So they came up with some website where Barack Obama has, has a hello at the back and they say get involved, something like that, and then sign up, join, etc., etc. And then they found that donation was quite good. Out of 100 people, about 45 people are donating by any standard, that is good. But then they thought, Am, are, are we doing the right thing? Can there be something better? Then someone said, we should put a video rather than a still. You know, a video is 1,000 images. So there will be some image in the video, some some uh, sl some uh, what is that called? Uh, a video is consists of so many something whatever. Uh, I, I don't remember. So uh, they put a video and they found that it is not converting into more you know more visitor is not converted into donors. Then some somebody said that you know if we put the familyism in the picture, perhaps this is going to do wonder. Then they put a picture of. Barack Obama's wife and the yeah, eldest daughter. Uh, she, he has two daughters. That time, perhaps the youngest one was not born or something. I don't know. So, no, there are two daughters. One is on the lap. I'm sorry. So they gave the two daughters. Now, when they put this picture, about 80% or maybe 75% of the people who are visiting the, visiting the website converted into donors. Now it's a wonderful revelation that people like familism than, you know, the hello behind Obama or whatever story you are going to say. No story is better than this story that is transmitted through the screenshot where the entire family is as a team and, and closely knitted. They're kind of, you know, ha hugging each other, something like that. So that gave them the lesson. What are the lesson? Every visitor to your website is an opportunity. If they are going away without donating, it's a missed opportunity. So you have to challenge your own hypothesis, challenge your own assumption that just this family picture is good enough. This is also a limited assumption because the conversion is 75%. Consumption is not 80%, 90%, sorry, 100%. Even if there is 100% consumption, 
may be the word of mouth is not transmitting that is why the growth of people who are visiting is not good enough so there is always always an opportunity to improve so you have to challenge your own hypothesis and then move forward so visiting the same thing again and again and then market survey what is the consideration for market survey i think i am running out of time just a minute let me take that in as fast and then we'll uh, I don't think we can go further beyond. So whatever number of slides I have, I will cover that in the next class.